Hey everyone, it's John Isaias here from The Automator, and today, if you've ever been in any sort of an open or save dialog box and you want to have a preference to have it, like I always want it sorted by date modified, because especially when I go to upload a file, the, the file I just worked on is the one I want to have access to, so I often sort it by date modified, but you might sort it by file type or by the name or something by default. There's no easy way to do that as a preference, so you there are other ways you can have it sort of work. But this tool, we actually wrote two different versions of it. We're going to talk through the pros and cons of each approach. Um, but it's it's really cool. So stick around. We'll give you the URL here at the end to go grab the tool. But um, Isaiah, I want you to jump into the options here. Excellent. So the first thing is we are including the UIA library for V2. Um, then you have two variables here that you can modify. Maybe later on we can convert this into a preferences GUI or whatever. But these are the two things that you can modify. What is the default sort option? And then you will have to use one of these guys. So we can just copy paste that there, okay? Um, and whether you want it ascending or descending, right? So that's it. Now, this one is just simply a little timer that is waiting for that window and take some logic to decide whether to click on it or not. And let me just run it so you see how it works. It is running on the background. It's not doing anything unless that window shows up. So for now, as it was already sorted by that modified, it didn't do anything, but let's do something. Let me just sort it by name here. So let's cancel here. And when I go ahead and open that up again, you will notice that now the date modified was clicked <laughs> after the window was open. And not only that, if you have a different way, like you, you look at the icons here. So let me let me go back to this sort by size, for example, and then have icons. When I go ahead and open that window again, it will be set back to detailed view and it will also set uh, or organized by date modified. Now, if at any point you decide, oh, right now in this instance, I want to sort it by name, it's not gonna go ahead and click again or do anything. Right. You can sort by whatever you want. Um, or change the point, view. Right. I it only that. happens when the window is opened. Now, I cancel there, and this would open would happen with any program. So if I open Notepad here, let's go ahead and open Notepad, and I click on the open view, you will notice that, let's, let's set this up again by name, details, close that. So I'm in Notepad, and I open this dialog, it should do the same thing. It would just make it the... Detail view, and it would just sort by date modified as well. So perfect. Um, it works on none of them. Isaias, uh, just to be a pain, <laughs> what if, could could we add a simple thing to say, hey, if I had the control, no, not control. If I had shift held down, if I had something held down when I open to not use my. Do that. Yeah, sure. Yeah. You can use the so, get. So you can use the um, get a key state. So if a specific key, let's say shift, is pressed, if that is done, then return and don't do anything. That's a very right, simple way. That's a very I simple way to time, like, oh, I don't want I want my icons, you know, don't don't apply this. So simple way to that that's uh, a that's a way. Or for example, I would do it with caps lock or something that is not a modifier key. Because so for example, for me to open something, I usually press control O. But if you That's press why... control shift O might be a little bit trickier. So maybe right. instead of a instead of a modifier key, maybe the state of the lock, the scroll lock, for example, if you wanted to be active. Yeah, well, all the people choose, right? It's just right. it just occurred to me that That's hey, a you thing know? that you can do, and that's how you actually check on that. There's the key, the get key state has a way of checking for a not a modifier key, but these logical ones, the toggle ones. You can yeah. check the toggle state of a specific key. So just check on that too. Now, in any case, or have another hot key that when you press it, it sets the toggle for you. It doesn't really matter. Now, as I mentioned, this only clicks once. So you might be wondering, okay, you have a timer that goes every 300 milliseconds. How do you know not to click twice? The trick in this particular code, I don't want to go too deep into it, is that I just wait for you to close the window. So once it gets, um, it the set timer is working, 
if the window is found, the last thing that is going to do is wait for it to get closed. So while this is waiting for the window to get closed, it's not being launched over and over again. That's what it's doing. And Joe just mentioned, hey, there's another way of doing that. Hold on. The yeah. other one, which we actually started with at first that we should mention, and it'd be easy for someone to convert this back, is to just have a hotkey to apply it. So yes, I sure. have my open, oh, I want it, my default settings, hit your hotkey, bam, it right. applies it. That way it only applies it once and super simple and there's no timer. It's just yeah. for me, this is something I use so much, I would want it to be the default thing. I don't want to have to You don't have do to it. think about it, right? So in this case, if you just set up a hotkey on top of the function name, you're good to go. Instead of a timer, now you just do this. And whenever you press F1, it will just call the function. It's the same thing, but now it's whenever you want instead right. of a timer. So that's a very, so let me just leave that there, comment it out. I'm going to leave this here. So, but again, to your point, there was another way, instead of just waiting for the window to be closed or whatever, or having a timer like this, hey, how about if we wait until Windows notifies us that the window was created? That is what a shell hook does. That is the second um, way of doing it. Again, you have the same variables up here. Now we register the shell hook. This is how you do it. And what this does is that whenever a window is created, destroyed, um, whenever a file is created and many other messages out there, Windows just simply sends you a message and say, hey, this just happened. This, even though it is easy to set up, might be a little bit trickier to get it sorted yeah. out to be, especially as you want. There's a few things that you have to take into consideration. But in the end, once you have it, in our case, this is the message that we were getting. Yes, this is the type of class. If the window is active, I check a few things before me performing the action because this is just the one thing that you have to keep in mind. The shell hook is sending you a very generalized message. It's just like, this action happened. Now you have to make sure that, okay, that action happened, but are certain conditions met before I actually do what I want to do? That's the only thing that makes it a little bit trickier. But in the end, this is better because this is not a set timer running in the background all the time. This is just like Windows tells you, hey, that just happened. Like oh, so let yeah. me just go ahead and perform the action. So if we run this, um, now this is the one that is running, and I do the open dialog, you see that it clicked. Let me just do that again. So I'm sorting by name now, and it goes ahead and clicks. But notice that now I don't have to wait for the window to be closed in order to continue with my stuff. Windows will automatically notify me the next time this happens. So I can now, again, sort by whatever I want without being afraid that it's going to be resorted back to date modified. That doesn't The care. point being, it's not a loop. Re it's not know, a loop, right. It's not a loop. <laughs> right. This is actually a notification that was sent to you. Hey, a window was open. What do you want to do? Oh, I want to check if the window is the one that I care about, if the control is what I want to do, and then I want to do this. So in the end, both codes do the same thing in the end. Um, for this one, you don't need a hotkey anymore. Like, you see what you mentioned, Joe, that, oh, I want to, uh, instead of having a timer, let's have a hotkey. You don't need to because it's not doing it over and over again. This is just a one-time thing. But we could still add what you mentioned. Hey, if I'm pressing a specific key, hey, right. how about I don't do anything? So let's just copy that in here. Um, if that key is being pressed, then just return and don't do anything. I can do that too. Again, this is one of the conditions that I want to check. And those returns, they're just saying, hey, don't continue if this is not, if, if the conditions that I want are not met. Yeah, Once it, all the conditions are checked, then I just go ahead and do whatever I wanted to do. Well, and what's really cool also is clearly if we cared to have it, uh, you could have it do a different sort. Right, like yes. just like you said, hold down a certain. Oh, I want it. I know I automatically right. wanted it. <laughs> yeah. If shift yeah. is pressed, then use the other direction if you wanted to. Yes, right. Definitely. Yeah. So it, it's very flexible. Yeah. Yeah. So it, again, we're using the UIA library. So that is involves objects. So if you're new to this kind of stuff, the our intro to objects in classes course is a really great place to start. 
but thank you for watching. If you enjoyed something here and, and learned something, please like the video. It helps us out. I'll put the URL to get both these scripts in case you want to dabble with either one of them. Up in here, it's in V2. We're suggesting everyone migrate to V2 for your new stuff. Uh, but thank you so much. We release videos twice a week, and we're the largest auto hockey channel out there, and I think the best, but it's just us. So have an awesome day. Cheers. Oh, happy birthday, Ryan. <laughs> Bye. Bye.